Ladies and gentlemen, I direct your attention out to the ramp at center point in front of the Reno Fire Department fire engine and Steve Stavrakakis. Frank, thank you so much, and thanks to all of you guys for being out here with us again today for the 49th running of these national championship air races. You know, without further ado, I would like to introduce a man that probably feels like he's had the weight of the world on his shoulders for at least one year now, the president and CEO of the Reno Air Race Association, Mr. Michael J. Howdy. This is going to be a uh, difficult time, but it's going to be one of those healing times that I think we'll all be able to shed a tear, reflect, and come to peace. For 15 races now, I've had the privilege of serving and working for the Reno Air Racing Association and being affiliated with what I think is one of the greatest aviation events in the world. Over that time, I've had the opportunity to meet and build relationships with some of the most fascinating, loyal, and caring people that I've ever known. Undoubtedly, I am a fan of aviation. But more importantly, I am an avid fan of the people that make up the family of aviation. It's all of you. This past year has been one of the most challenging that I've ever, I've ever known. As this Air Race family was dealt a devastating blow exactly one year ago today. And just as when any family experiences loss, we've all experienced grief, sadness, and some tremendous sorrow. Yet at the same time, I've had the very special opportunity to meet and bond with some of the most courageous, most inspiring, the most resilient individuals and families that I've ever met. I can truly tell you that I've changed in the last 12 months. And thanks to these relationships, I feel that I've grown and I've become a better person because of it. The theme of this year's event is a tribute. Over the past few days, we've paid tribute to a number of different people and organizations, and while there are many more who deserve recognition today, it is dedicated to paying tribute to all of those who were so greatly affected by the cold and unsympathetic and somber hands of fate and to memorializing those 11 members of our Air Race family who are no longer with us today. While we miss seeing their smiles, hearing their laughs, and enjoying their company, their spirits will remain forever above us, and their memories will never be forgotten. In their absence, our lives have changed, yet I've seen firsthand that through their memories, and through watching and getting to know those they left behind, we can better understand what it means to love and to live. We've always been proud to call this a world-class event and to draw hundreds of thousands of people from around the world. Buoyed by the support of many of the victims and many of the affected families who are here today, We've worked hard to overcome the challenges to allow us to continue the great tradition of this event. But don't be confused. It's not the planes, the exposure, or the economic impact that inspired us to bring this event back in 2012. Plain and simple, it's people. It started now about six weeks after this horrible day last year, I went with our mayor who spent a lot of time visiting injured and friends and families at the hospitals. He took me along, contrary to the wishes of some of the attorneys, but uh, 
I had the privilege to meet Chuck Elvin, the Elvin family. In the middle of his grief, loss of his wife, the severe injuries that he, his sons, and his daughter-in-law experienced, Chuck looked me in the eye and he said, as he poked that big finger of his in my chest, you better run these races next year because my family is going to come back and we're going to be here. And they are here. That's also Larry Cruz. Larry was severely injured, but after talking to the press, he made a very poignant statement, I think, that sums up a lot of what we all feel. Larry said, I want to be back next year in my box, smoking a cigar and having a margarita. He's here. Larry, blend one for me because when this is over, I'm coming over, we're going to have that margarita together. Words cannot express the emotion and the inspired sadness that I feel as I look at each and every one of you in the stands. We've all shed many tears and had many longing conversations as we miss our loved ones and our friends. And think about life the way that it was. Earlier this week, we recognized the incredible actions and selflessness and the stories of heroism that were forged in the face of horror. And well, there were many women and men who, after watching them over the past year, I truly consider to be heroic. I can honestly tell you, the families of those who suffered such great loss are truly some of my greatest heroes. Thank you. I know I'm not alone in feeling that, and today you'll hear from others who were also greatly moved and affected, not just by last year's events, but by the actions and attitudes that have been on display since. Immediately after the accident, Mayor Bob Cashel, Governor Brian Sandoval, and Senator Dean Heller came out to the, came out to the airfield to offer support and extend all of the resources at their disposal to provide comfort and aid to all of those both physically and mentally affected by the tragedy. I very much appreciate their leadership and their support, and I am very glad to have Mayor Cashel over in the boxes and Senator Heller joining me out here today. At this time, I'd like to invite Senator Dean Heller to share some of his thoughts. Thank you, Mike. Mayor, thank you also for everybody that's here this afternoon. As Mike said, today marks exactly a year since a tragic event took place on these very grounds. A tragedy that shocked and saddened all of us Nevadans. A tragedy we will remember forever. On this very day last September, a celebration of skill and spirit became instead an unforgettable moment of loss and heartache. A fun-filled afternoon of families, friends, and flying, instead a heartbreaking day for our entire community. Words cannot convey the profound sense of grief we all felt when 11 of our neighbors, our friends, were taken from us. We cannot articulate the full measure of loss and pain that is still felt by those who today are missing a husband, a wife, a son, or a daughter, a loved one, a friend. This tribute ceremony is about the lives that we remember and the stories we can tell about those, about those whose time with us has ended, whose memories are forever etched in our hearts. 
This ceremony is about Sharon Stewart from Reno, who was working at the air races. This ceremony is about Michael Wogan, who came to the races last year with his father Bill, and who attended the event in a wheelchair because of his physical disabilities. This ceremony is about remembering John Craig of Gardnerville, who owned his own construction company, and George and Wendy Hewitt, who attended the races from their home state of Arizona. We remember Greg Morcom, who was attending his first air races with his family, and Regina Bynum, who had attended these races in the past. We remember James McMichael, who was here from Washington, and Cheryl Olvin, visiting from Kansas. We remember Craig Salerno, a pilot and volunteer firefighter from Texas, and we remember pilot Jimmy Leeward, who had attended his very first Reno Air Races in 1964. I also want to recognize those who are in attendance today who were injured during the races last year. Thank you. Thank you for being here today. We cannot erase the pain of the past. We cannot explain why this person was taken, why another was injured. There are no adequate answers to that enduring question. But what we can do, and what we must do, is remember the lives of those we loved and lost, and the unique way they touched those around them. While we can never replace them, we can remember them. We can tell their story, we can carry their spirit with us, and keep their memories alive. I believe that by being here today, we are doing exactly what those who we lost would have wanted us to do. They wanted us to continue this tradition of celebrating the human spirit of adventure. The continuation of these air races will be an enduring memorial to these victims and their families. As is the case with any tragedy, despite the pain, we come together as Americans and as Nevadans to meet the crisis with unity and resolve. I was deeply impressed last year by the remarkable professionalism and commitment from our first responders, who did an outstanding job attending to those who were injured and who saved lives by their heroic actions. We remain forever grateful to them for their invaluable efforts, and I cannot thank them enough. My gratitude also goes out to the doctors, nurses, and administrators at each of the hospitals that attended to the victims and those who were injured. You are truly a remarkable group of people. The coordination among various federal, state, and local agencies in the aftermath of the crash was absolutely outstanding. And I am pleased these entities and other organizations worked so hard to do the right thing for the victims, their families, and for those that were injured. And we continue to hold those still recovering in our thoughts and prayers. One year later, as this year's air races come to an end, I hope that we have taken an important first step towards recovering as a community. This process will not be quick nor easy, but we will undertake it together, and together we will carry on the legacy of those we remember today. Thank you, and God bless all of you, these families. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. To explain a little bit about what we have going on out here, uh, some the flowers, uh, Northern Nevada has her ways and uh, likes to blow a lot in the afternoon. So uh, helping us with our fo uh, flowers and making sure they remain upright, some uh, of our friends from the box seat area have volunteered to come out and help us out. Also on the fire truck behind me is the banner 
that was uh, on display and so many of our friends, other citizens of Reno, Air Race fans, that went to the candlelight vigil last year signed. So we thought it was a very poignant moment to have that uh, here uh, with us today. It's often said that the true medal of character is not only tested, but defined in the face of the most challenging adversity. Last year, our collective spirit was tried, challenged, and the very limits in the true nature of human spirit was revealed. I'm humbled to say that I've always known, but have found to be especially true in the past months, the Reno Air Race family is one of an indomitable spirit and true selflessness. I've seen the strongest, most disciplined of pilots and emergency responders break down and cry. And I've seen some of the most meek, reserved, rise to the occasion and become strong. I simply don't have time to share all the stories and feelings that I've had and the great, had the great privilege of witnessing as we recovered from last year's events. Earlier last week, we lowered our home pylon flag to half station to remember those that we've lost. Today, as we share in the tears, the heartfelt thoughts, as we sing our national anthem, that flag will be raised to full staff, and we will move ahead. We will move ahead together, and we are going to continue the air races. While I've been touched in many ways, one of the people I've always admired, and I've really admired through this ordeal, is Reno Fire Department's Battalion Chief, Tim Spencer. Chief Spencer was the incident commander overseeing and coordinating all of the responses for last year's accident. This, this total effort was nothing short of extraordinary. However, those of you that know Chief Spencer would most admire the personal investment that he's made in the lives of all those who are greatly impacted at the same time. It is my privilege to introduce you to my friend, Tim Spencer. Good morning. On Saturday, September 17, 2011, Captain Dennis Jacobson and I were still on site and felt compelled to do something for the families who lost their loved ones in the accident. David Marion, a flag vendor out of Oregon, located at the base of our emergency operations tower, seemed to be the logical choice of individuals to help us with our special project. David's business was finished for the week, and as he was packing up, we discussed how nice it would be to use one of his flagpoles to fly flags at half-staff in honor of each victim. David was all in for helping us do this and offered to provide the flags. These flags were special before he gave them to us. They had been flown by the Oregon Air National Guard F-15s on July 4th over the state of Oregon by the 114th fighter wing out of Kingsley Field. David selflessly offered these flags to us with the flight certificates. We conducted our own half-staff ceremony using my staff vehicle. Today, we're honored to be here before you, the entire Air Race family, to celebrate the memory of these special individuals. Presenting for the Reno Fire Department, Dan Tilsey, David Blonfield, the Airport Authority Fire Department, Lawrence Smith, Bill Botello, the Nevada Air National Guard Fire Department, Jason Leggett, Emery Simons, Lemon Valley Volunteer Fire Department, Miguel Mary, and Steve Graff. Remza, Alan Tom, Steve Park, and Sergeant Eric. Our honor guard today will be Captain Dennis Jacobson and Reno Police Officer Lieutenant Bill Rula. And I'd just like to acknowledge a couple of guys standing behind me here. This is David and Lieutenant Colonel Pappy French. Thank you. like to honor our victims.
Regina Bynum. John Grayick. Precious Lord, take my hand, Jimmy, the word. Greg Morcom. Greg Salerno. Sharon Stewart. Michael Wogan. And now, Reno Fire Department Chaplain, Stephen Arbor, to share a moment of prayer and reflection. Every family, let us pray. Almighty God, we call upon your presence as we honor and pay tribute to those of our Aries family who lost their lives or were physically injured or emotionally injured by the tragic events that took place one year ago today. For those in attendance to loved ones affected in the aftermath of this tragedy, thank you for your answered prayer. We thank you for giving us the precious lives of those lost. Each touch, touched us and others in many ways. May we continue to honor them by nurturing the ways each helped us to grow as individuals. Father, we ask, us, ask for a healing touch on the minds and bodies of those who may continue to suffer today. Allow us to move forward in our grief process. May we continue to be stronger, more passionate, and caring for our family and friends alike. We ask for your continued protection on the events that continue today. May we be revitalized, encouraged, and continue our zest for life. We humbly ask these things in your precious name. Amen. From the poet Flavia Whedon, she wrote in her poem, Some People, Some people come into our lives and leave footprints on our hearts, and we're never 
ever the same. So people come into our lives and quickly go. Some stay for a while and embrace our silent dreams. They help us to become aware of the delicate winds of hope, and we discover within every human spirit there are wings just yearning to fly. They help us, or they help our hearts to see that the only stairway to the stars is woven with dreams, and we find ourselves unafraid to reach new highs. They celebrate the true essence of who we are and have faith in all that we can become. Some people awaken us to new and deeper realizations, where we gain insight from the passing whisper of their wisdom. Throughout our lives, we're sent precious souls, meant to share our journey, however brief or lasting their stay, they remind us why we're here. To learn, to teach, to nurture, to love. Some people come into our lives and cast a steady light upon our path and guide our every footstep. Their shining belief in us helps us to believe in ourselves. Some people come into our lives to teach us about love, the love that rests within ourselves. Let us reach out to others and feel the bliss of giving, for love is far richer in action than it ever is in words. Some people come into our lives and move our hearts to sing and make our spirits dance. They help us to see that everything on this earth is part of the incredibility of life and that it's always there to take of its joy. Some people come into our lives and leave footprints on our hearts and we're never, ever the same. Ladies and gentlemen, while we are committed to persevering and continuing to carry on the camaraderie and brotherhood of this annual aviation celebration, we must never forget the events that happened September 16, 2011. Please join us now as we take a moment of silence to remember the victims, their families, and all of those impacted by last year's terrible tragedy. Ladies and gentlemen, our color guard today, representatives of the Nevada Army National Guard, Private Jesse Sparks, and Staff Sergeant Gail Dennis, representing the Nevada Air National Guard, Senior Airman Rick Catlin, and Tech Sergeant Mark McGee. Now, if not already standing, please do so. Remove your headgear and prepare to join the award-winning Reno Silver Dollar Chorus under the direction of Mr. Bill Weiser in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so
charge. You may retire the colors. Now, if you look high over your head, you'll see a skydiver bringing in Old Glory, your American flag. This is no ordinary skydiver. This is Sergeant First Class Retired Dana Bowman. He's who has astounded the nation and the world with his drive, determination to succeed. He's a Sergeant First Class of the United States Army, where he's a Special Forces soldier and a member of the United States Elite Parachute Team, the Golden Knights. On February 6, 1994, he gained worldwide attention when he lost his leg in a training accident. Ladies and gentlemen, keep it going for Sergeant First Class Retired, Dana Bowman, an inspiration to all. How about it for the award-winning Reno Silver Dollar Chorus? Under the direction of Mr. Bill Weiser. And from the left, your Oregon Air National Guard from Kingsley Field, Klamath Falls, Oregon, the F-15 Strike Eagle. And one more time from the left, your F-15 Strike Eagle from Kingsley Field, Klamath Falls, Oregon, the Oregon Air National Guard. And three's a charm, one more time from the left. The F-15 Strike Eagle, courtesy of the Air National Guard, the Oregon Air National Guard from Kingsley Field, Klamath Falls, Oregon. One more time, folks. This is your Air National Guard. Danny and Frank, back to you on the announcing stand. Thank you very much. Uh, that was just beautiful, Steve. I got to admit, that really came together just beautifully.